Retail Tech Podcast over at uh, Shop Talk 16 with uh, Amit Bivas from uh, Optimove. So, uh, Amit, thank you very much for taking time to talk to me. Uh, can you tell me uh, about what Optimove does? Uh, thanks, Darius, for uh, having me for this uh, interview. Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk a bit about Optimove. So, Optimove is a customer marketing cloud, and what we do is we connect, um, we help businesses grow through their existing customer base. So, if I roughly um, take marketing, B2C marketing, and divide it into two. So one is acquisition marketing, driving new blood into the system, if you will. And then the second end is retention marketing, making sure that that blood pumps within the system for as, as long as possible. So we're a best in breed uh, solution in that sense, and we help businesses invest in their existing customers as a growth engine of the company. Okay, so um, who, who is your typical customer? Our typical customer is, um, is is any B2C brand with a focus on retailers, um, which um, which probably matured on uh, on the basic segmentation, right? So they're managing probably five, six different segments segments in terms of customer marketing, and now they want to take it up a notch, right? So they want to manage tens or hundreds of different segments, take personalization to a new level. So Optimove enables those kinds of companies to communicate with your with their customers in um, let's let's say like in a, an emotional intelligent fashion so talking with them having that x factor making them feel that fuzzy feeling where they're able you know to to get engagement full on okay so how does how do customers actually how do customers actually use optimove is it a, like a software platform they have to integrate into their own like website or back end or so that's a good question. So Optimove, uh, Optimove is working at it as a box. So from one side, it integrates, it connects to your database. So we'll have a database to database connection and we'll extract on a daily basis all of the data that's on a single customer level, all the granular raw data. And then obviously we'll do all manipulations on it and build our predictive models on, that, on top of that data. And then on the other side, it connects to your existing execution systems. Any type of marketing execution system that communicates on a one-to-one -one level, we'd connect with. So that would be your email service provider, uh, your Bronto, for instance, or your Silver Pop. Um, or we'll connect with your SMS uh, provider. We'll connect with your uh, mobile app so we can launch push notifications. Any one of those channels that, you know, that communicates on a one-to-one -one level, Facebook custom audiences, uh, Google Display Network that could, you know, be fed with cookie IDs and then you know exactly who's receiving that that. Uh, that um, ad, so any would connect to all of those channels and orchestrate them. So we'd feed them with what, what communication to serve to which customer. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm just trying to understand more as to like how the customer actually uses it in a day-to-day -day basis. Who is it? Like the merchandising team or the marketing team? Who's using the software? That's a that's a great question. Um, I'm sorry for all the fluff that sorry, I didn't get to that <laughs> until this point. So the idea is uh, it's, it's, it's a marketing technology. Um, so the marketing team would use it and today we see more and more uh, independent CRM teams. So it's the CRM team or the marketing team, whomever is in charge of uh, communicating with with existing customers. So relationship management, all of that stuff. So those are the people that are going to drive Optimove. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a marketing person at the company. Uh, I go to work in the morning. I open up Optimove, like a, you know my own account into your web interface probably, mm -hmm. and then I do what? So first off, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to look at you know all of the different segmentation, the results, all the predictions. So the future value predictions, the churn predictions, uh, the reactivation predictions, conversion predictions, all of that. And then from that, you're going to take action items on what type of marketing action to start running. So the, 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 mo the, the, the part that probably you'd use 80% of your time on is the, um, the, the, the retention calendar, which is built like a... Um, um, its y-axis is target groups, segments that the marketer builds on his own, and the x-axis axis is, uh, is is a calendar, dates. Mm -hmm. And then um, where where a certain um, target group meets a certain date, that's a campaign. 
right? Okay, so so then I, I scheduled a campaign for that date. Exactly, exactly. And then what's what's cool about it is that these groups are refreshed on a daily basis. So today, um, a certain customer can belong to group A, I don't know, which could be um, new customers in their first 14 days that showed interest in lingerie, uh, didn't purchase, uh, and are predicted to be high value customers. Let's say that's that's the target group that the marketer built. And then their campaign is um, a discount on lingerie um, because they're likely to purchase and they browse that. So we want to push them to action. And then, you know, as new customers, always your goal is going to be to bring them back to their second purchase, right? right. Um, so, so that's, for example, one group and one campaign. And then what happens is that on a daily basis, different customers are attributed to different target groups. Okay. So it's updated on a, day, on a daily basis. So that leads me to what this is. You know, today the trending uh, term is, is um, customer journeys. So in a way, we're talking about infinite customer journeys because it's a memoryless system, right? So we build those target groups, which in a way are, are, are states in the customer journey. So regardless of how he got there, he's going to get a certain treatment, right? right? right. Um, and, and then he's going to get to another phase and get another treatment. So it's a memoryless system. So regardless of how you got to a certain... So it's, it's not a journey because regardless of how you got to a certain phase, that's, what you, that's the treatment you're going to get. Okay. And then hypothetically, you can build... Uh, uh, yeah, any, t- any, yeah, uh, endless number of, of customer journeys, right. infinite customer journeys. Right, right. So um, you obviously have to integrate to the historical data as well, right? So you 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 look at what a specific customer, for example, has done um, with the co- with the company. Like, for example, if you have like a profile of the customer, you can build on that. Or if not, then how do you do? Do you have like a tracking? Uh, like a or retargeting method as well in theirs. So that's a great question. The answer is yes and yes. Um, so yes, we connect with the database, and as I said, we extract all the data historically. So we take all the data that's out there and and, and into into the cl- into our cloud servers, and then manipulate uh, have like algorithms, you know, run through the data and create those uh, those single customer views. Um, we also have trackers. Um, an SDK for mobile apps and uh, a JavaScript pixel you put in your website, and then we track track uh, the customers. Um, which leads me to something very unique about what we do is we're able to track anonymous customers, and then once they do convert, we connect their history to their profile when they were anonymous. And then the idea is so the next question is how do you actually um, communicate them when they're still anonymous. Right. So what we do is we create customer uh, personas, right? That's part of the segmentation. So we know that a certain customer that answers this criteria did convert, and this is what he looks like as a customer. So based on that knowledge, we know how to target him when he is uh, still anonymous. Does that make sense? Sort of. <laughs> Without knowing the actual technology. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that makes sense. Um, the... Um What's the difference? So you probably have customers in, that uh, just do e-commerce, and then you have customers that have omni-channel stores and, as well. W- w- how do you handle each one, and then what's like the biggest difference? So that's a great, the, a great question. I'd say that the biggest difference is data. So obviously, e-com has much more rich data, right? You can track uh, browsing, uh, browsing in data. You can see transactional data. You can see all of that, and it's always identified. So once you log in, you know who's the actual person that, do- that did that. And even if you it didn't log in, it, and he logged in in the past, so using the tracking, you're able to know what he does even when he's not identified. In brick and mortar, it's tougher. We have beacons today, and we have loyalty programs today that enable um, tracking, you know, enable generating that data. But it's still short in comparison to online online data. So that's the biggest difference. And another difference is the targeting. So you you have much more um, real time capabilities to target uh, online rather than offline. So offline, yeah, with beacons, um, you could you know run a push push notification when someone's close to some section of the of the of the of the store. Real time, you can do whatever. I mean, in, in online, sorry, you can do whatever. You can target him uh, through email, um, through real time push notifications, and also offline. So there's like in shop, uh, in shop marketing, and out shop marketing, bringing them into the shop. So once again, I'd say in online, um, the data is richer, and and the marketing uh, execution channels, relevant execution channels, are are 
are, are more um, rich. However, we can definitely work on personalization 2.0, let's call this, with brick and mortar. And we have more than a handful of customers that do that. Okay, so I mean, when I talk about like omnichannel, I, I'm thinking somebody already has a store. They they have multiple. They have more than just online. So they probably have more data than just an online retailer, because they don't. The online retailer is just focused on the website. The omnichannel retailer has a website, but they also have data coming from their individual stores. So the challenge is, how do you match and analyze? The, the data from a customer that went to their website in the morning and then maybe in the store in the afternoon or may come back on the weekend and make sense of that so it becomes actionable. So, so once again, you're asking a great question. So um, th that is a big challenge because what, what usually happens is it's, it's the challenge is understanding the, the uh, connecting the offline customer, the brick and mortar customer with the online customer. Um, there are ways to do that today, a lot of deduping and all that stuff, understanding, um, removing uh, duplicate, uh, duplicate contents, contacts and creating um, one unique customer identifier that's both online and offline. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough process which mostly is uh, building like um, a um, uh, data warehouse which is unite for the whole brand, offline, online, as you said, omnichannel. So, um, in that sense, it's it's a big project which um, we also offer. It's not our it's not our core capability, but we also offer that. Um, but there are a lot of companies out there that know how to do that, and that's their you know that's their bread and butter. Yeah, I think we're just at the beginning of this entire cycle, where ultimately there will be seamless experiences and technologies that uh, retailers are going to use to you know really track everything all together. Definitely, definitely, we're seeing that. We're, we're, we've been around since uh, 2009, where it was quite rare. You know, all of this personalization, people would say, yeah, you know, personalization is uh, uh, dear F name, L name, you know? <laughs> so we're seeing how this uh, how the space is, 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 is emerging, and we're seeing how things are, you know, and, and today, you know, communicating, we're talking about these millennials and these new type of consumers. So communicating with them is much tougher than back in the day. F name, L name doesn't work anymore, right? So you need to talk with them in the fashion of what they're doing and, 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 and be very gentle with them because their attention span is so, 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 you know, short that if you're not on the spot, boom, you're burnt. So, so that's the biggest challenge, and I think that technology is as optimal have helped, helped doing that. And as you said, it's only just the tip of the iceberg. The, 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 this whole, you know, data uh, marketing um, space is definitely gonna gonna grow tenfold in the last in the next probably couple of years. Okay. So, is this uh, is Optimo a uh, SaaS model? Yes, yes. Optimo is a SaaS model. The way we price is uh, uh, on a monthly basis, a monthly licensing fee, which is a function of. Uh, the the paying paying portion of the database so the kpi is unique uh monthly purchasers and then we have brackets and we charge based on that okay um now uh, do you have any uh, like live omni-channel customers that you can talk about um so we have a few um maybe we can talk about in this uh, sense about la perla okay uh, so La Perla is uh, is uh, an, an omni-channel. Um, Where are they based out of? They're headquartered in uh, in Italy. Um, they're a retailer for women lingerie and and and, and elite um, swimwears and, and that type of fashion uh, for 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 women. Okay. And um, they're headquartered out of uh, out of uh, Italy, but they are spread out uh, across the, the 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 globe. So they have stores. They have stores and then they have online. Um, so what, what, what usually happens is we, we, we connect with their data, we mostly work with their online side, um, but we also are able to enrich their, their data with data that they send in from the offline stores. Okay. So they, they've been the customer for 
a, a while now? They've been a customer for the past uh, couple of years, yes. Um, they're, they're having uh, great results using Optimove. Um, they're able to understand the, the, their customers better and cater to their wants and needs better. So there's the, the level of segmentation they're seeing through Optimove is, is great. And they're able, once again, we're talking about that millennial customer, that customer 2 or even 3 or 5.0. Um, so that level of understanding is, 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 is essential to communicate with them in that fashion. So, so definitely. So do you also pull in external data or is it just internal data that you use, like, you know, social network data, things like that? So we extract first party data. Now, if a certain retailer has, you know, uses uh, data enrichment uh, uh, tools, so we, we're happy to take that from his database. Um, but our, you know, our belief is, and, and that's what we see over time, that first party data is more than enough. All of those enrichments is important. I'm not saying that it's not. It does have a place. But a good baseline, a good starting point is first-party data. And it has more, it's more than enough, it, it's rich enough to feed a great, a great volume of personalization. Okay. Um, what is a typical implementation cycle look like? It's a good question. So um, usually it's going to, uh, onboarding takes uh, somewhere between... Um, Two weeks to, 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 to five weeks. Depending on how, how ready the customer is usually. How ready and how responsive they are. Because end of the day, the, the, the plug into their database uh, requires a lot of um, you know, um, IT resources in that sense. Right. Um, so if they're cooperative, it could take you know, a week. Usually those guys, the IT guys, I'm sorry for saying this, yeah, but they're not as cooperative as we'd like them to be. But, uh, it's, because they have like a million top priorities I think probably. right it's yeah. always a quest, uh, question of prioritization like uh, Yahoo's CEO said back in the day prioritize ruthlessly otherwise you're not gonna get things done right. but yeah it's, it's about prioritization um, and, and we, we get it done we have over 180 brands uh, working with us so, so it could be as quick as a week it could be potentially as quick as a week usually it doesn't happen okay uh, so let's say had, let's say a safe bet is let's see two to, two to four weeks Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then after that, is, a tr is there a training? There is a training. So complementary with the software, we have a customer success management services. So uh, our, our our team of CSMs will walk uh, our, our will walk uh, the brand that works with us through how to use the software and you know some best practices and stuff like that. And on top of that, we have also strategic services, which is uh, in a way like professional services on how to manage, on a strategic uh, sense, your CRM using Optimove. Right. Um, so here's a, another question that I, it's like a general question I asked uh, all the people that uh, I interview. If you were to explain where you see the future of retail being in like one specific tool or technology or capability, what would that be? I know it's a tough one, but it's not a tough one. We actually wrote a lot of content about it. So what I'd say is, personalize or vaporize okay okay that's a good one yeah it is it, that's a, that's just, a you have to use. talk to individuals exactly not to groups swatches, anymore right targeting swatches doesn't work anymore you want to talk to the person you want to communicate with them in an emotional intelligent fashion and then that's the only way to get them engaged um, competition is fierce if you won't personalize and you won't talk with a person his language and communicate with him in the fashion of what he did and what he wants, he's going to, you know, bounce to the competition. It's that easy. And you see uh, retailers actually, um, I guess, uh, agreeing with that? Definitely, definitely. It's going there and we work with... Uh, with a lot of uh, industries other than retail, um, but, it, but, but we're seeing that in retail, they're starting to embrace on this, and we're seeing how using such technologies is a competitive edge. Okay. If you were a uh, retailer yourself, what would be the, like the, you know, the, the most important thing in your life right now? I mean, as far as like making sure that you're getting, is it like, you know, getting the right technology, getting the right products, or reaching the customers in the right way? I mean, what's the... So that, 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 now that's a tough question. I, I, I'd answer this way. I'd say that it very much depends on the stage the company's at. So when you're just launching, obviously you want to invest more into customer acquisition, right? You want, you want, you want to have customers. You're starting from scratch. So then 
strategically, my initiative would be to beef up my customer base, get customers. Then at some point, there's a tipping point where you want to start you know, balancing it towards customer marketing, investing in your existing customer base, and start to personalize in order to get repeat business. So first of all, I'd say that the answer is it depends on where the company is at. Okay. Um, First of all, you want to build your customer base. Then you want to, you know, invest in and make sure. Always, you need to invest in an acquisition, right? But at some point, you want to start investing in, in retention and in personalized customer marketing in order to, you know, make sure that that your ROI positive on your acquisition uh, costs. Great answer to a tough question. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I we're coming up on time here. Um, I wanted to thank you again for. Uh, giving me this time and uh, I think there's uh, some really valuable information and in insight and uh, if uh, people anybody wanted to follow up with you or get in touch uh, what do you recommend as far as contact information so first of all thanks for a great interview uh, enjoyed uh, the, the good questions um, in terms of contacting us uh, you can look at our website optimove.com and um, you can we're more than welcome to contact me personally. It's Amit A M for Mother I T for Tom underscore B for Bob at Optimove.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amit, and best of luck. Thanks, Darius. Thank you.